what was your best, you have no power here moment. Story 1. I was working for a huge clothing store chain as a temp student worker one summer, many years ago. I worked there for two days before one of the employees started acting weird around me. Bossing me around, we weren't working in the same department, so she shouldn't even have been telling me anything. Coming to the changing rooms where I was folding the discarded clothes to talk on the internal phone next to me to say, Oh my god, the new student hasn't even finished what you asked her to do yet. What the F? She's wasting my time. And basically just being demeaning for no reason. One day, I realized she was following me around the store, hiding behind clothes racks or watching me while pretending to be folding pants. She wasn't even in her own area, so she stuck out like a sore thumb. At one point, she started coming up to me to berate me for the smallest things. She was leaving and coming back every few minutes doing the same routine until she had a real grievance about something I forgot to pick up in the stock room and she sent me there to do it immediately. I'd been there only a few minutes when guess who walks in? The crazy stalker. She started yelling at me, telling me everything I did wrong, that I was sitting around instead of working. I sat once to do my shoelaces. She said, you're messing up my store. She was barely above me, working 20 hours a week. I listened and replied to some things until she got to the end of her rant and delivered what was to be her mic drop line. Well, anyway, you're just a freaking temp worker. I just looked at her and said, Well, yeah, I'm a student. I'm just here to pay my plane ticket to go on vacation. You're stuck here. The best part was she went to talk to the floor manager afterwards, saying I yelled at her and called her all kinds of names. The manager came up to me and told me that the girl was crazy and was doing the same thing every time a new temp student came in, to the point they had a hard time finding student workers. I asked the day after to be sent to another store. Oh boy, as a former retail worker myself, I knew all too well the pains of dealing with difficult colleagues and bosses. But this particular story takes it to a whole new level of crazy. It's one thing to have a coworker who's a little bossy or rude, but to have someone follow you around the store hiding behind clothes racks like a deranged spy, that's a whole nother level of creepy. Whole nother. Story two. I worked for a company that had one of those video game buses with the TVs and couches and stuff like that on the inside. I was the only employee and was technically the event manager and supervisor. That was just a fancy term for me being the only one to drive the truck and set it up and do maintenance on it and stuff like that. All my boss did was schedule bookings and tell me where I was going. I processed the payments as well, so I was basically in charge of the entire operation. This woman came into the trailer at the end of a party to complain to me about her kid not having enough fun. I told her all the other kids were having a great time and nobody else complained. She insisted I give her a full refund since her kid didn't enjoy himself, and I told her I wasn't going to do that. She asked who my manager was, and I told her I was the manager. She then asked who my employer was, and I told her his name. She demanded I call him so she could talk to him and on speakerphone. My boss said, I wasn't there to see how things were going. It's up to DM Nudes for compliment to determine whether a refund is called for or not. Side note, while he was technically my boss, it was more like two friends running a business. He's a few years older than me and hired me off the street, but we were both in our 20s at the time. He just turned 30 like six months ago, and his dad paid for everything for him. Very wealthy family. So he wasn't really that concerned about sucking the customer's dong. I ended up telling her I wasn't going to refund the entire $350 because one kid didn't have a good time, and promptly left. What's funny is a bunch of the parents at the event apparently got rave reviews from their kids, and that party actually brought in like 8 new customers, a few of which booked us multiple times a year. She apparently tried talking bad about the company to the other parents, but that didn't seem to stop them since everyone else had a great time. I missed that job. Best job I ever had. I'm pretty sure the boss in this story is John Ralphio from Parks and Rec. It sounds like he comes from a wealthy family and is just starting businesses left and right willy-nilly, especially this business, which is aimed at like 10-year-old kids uh, on a party bus with video games. Pretty sure that was from an exact episode. And as we all know, John Ralph Jean Ralphio was flushed with cash. Story three. My mother-in-law passed away last year, and my wife and I got rid of the leftover stuff. Most was easy, except the AT&T router for her internet access. We got a total runaround. I brought it into an AT&T store, the same one my mother-in-law had signed up from, 
and they said it had to be returned in some special box from the local post office. We went to the post office and were told the special box came from AT&T. We went back to AT&T in a different city and were told yet another BS story. It caused my wife an amazing amount of grief. Her mother had just passed away. She'd been trying to do the adult thing and responsibly close out her mother's accounts, and AT&T was just being a bunch of butt clowns. The router became her albatross. The router sat in the trunk of her car for weeks. One day I'm grabbing lunch and noticed another AT&T. I walk inside and up to a desk where a representative is talking internet plans with another customer. I don't interrupt, but the rep pauses to give me a story about how I can't return the router here and will need to set up a return with a central office. I calmly put the router on her desk and said, no, I won't be doing that. The owner of this account just passed away. I'm just trying to give you your property back. You've given me the runaround for weeks. Now I'm done. As I turn to walk away, she yells, but we're just going to throw it away if you leave it here. You'll get charged for it. Okay by me. I toss over my shoulder as I walk out the door. Good luck collecting from a passed away woman. I occasionally wonder if the other customer stuck around or not. But then I remember who runs the FCC, and it's not like there's a real choice in ISPs in most areas of the country. Oh, AT&T, you never cease to amaze with your impressive levels of customer service. At this point, with how crummy all the internet service providers are and all the telecommunication companies, I'd rather just return to the olden days where we had carrier pigeons. At least with those guys, they were loyal and reliable. As long as you had some breadcrumbs. Hmm, so I guess it's crummy either way. Story 4. Oh, frick, I'm late to this, and this is one of the best situations. I had a boss in a job I worked at for 11 years. He was a total poop head, ran the place like it was a prison camp, and wrote people up for nothing. He was a senior manager and pretty high up on our corporate ladder, and I was a laborer doing labor work. I was actually on a temp contract and was given full time by another manager, and this guy told me if it were my decision, I would have just let the contract run out. Anyways, years went by and I gradually moved up the ladder. Around year 8, he was let go in order to change it up a bit, and that was the last I saw of him. I eventually moved on and into a management role at a new company, reporting to just a single senior manager and then the president. My manager was promoted to a director role in another area, and the job became vacant. Guess who applied? He searched the place out on LinkedIn and found I was there, and he name-dropped me in his interview. He sent me a message saying he'd appreciate it if I put in a good word for him. Yeah, well, I wasn't going to work for Hitler twice, so I told him politely, I'm sorry, but I don't feel your leadership style is suited for this work environment. I then told HR the same thing and some of the stories of the past. He didn't get hired. Screw that guy. Story 5 I worked for a school board and they contracted me to do some additional work on the side creating a website. When it was complete, I went to the guy for a presentation and payment and he told me he wouldn't be paying me and there was nothing I could do. I leaned over and deleted the site. He seemed curiously surprised somehow. I giggled. He later wanted the website restored and he would pay me with stolen school merchandise. I told him I wasn't going to steal from children and teachers just so he could have leverage on me. Another time I had made a website allowing people to send messages to the members of the school board. He later wanted me to send him the messages so he could vet them. I added him to the CC of every message. I was then asked in a board meeting why he was also getting these messages, and I told them why he felt entitled to their private communications. They talked to him. When I put in my notice, there he came to my cubicle on a busy floor and told me I'd have to pay them back for the training they sent me to. He said it so quietly too. So I asked him if he was threatening me, but I said it loudly so everyone came to see what was up. He literally fled. What a tool. As soon as this guy said school board, I knew there was going to be drama. There's just something about that environment, whether it's like the interaction with the community, the parents, the stress that teachers have to go through for such little pay. It's just always a perfect storm for work drama. Sometimes I wonder though, because there's drama at every type of work, if the drama at school settings is just more because the type of people that work there are generally more social. And with that socialization comes the natural human instinct for gossiping and scheming and just a general dynamic for convolution. Story 6. Working in an inner city retail store, the new store manager changed our working hours so everyone finished at the same time the store closed and wouldn't let us escort customers out of the store until after closing time. 
She also threatened to report anyone logging the overtime we were doing to close the store as though we were lying on our timesheets. This went on for about a week before we unanimously decided to just sign out and leave the store at closing time with customers still in it and the store manager all by herself. About 30 or 40 people, part timers and casuals, all risking our jobs to oppose her. She called upper management, who threatened to fire everyone. We passed that on to the retail workers union, and suddenly the old store manager has returned. Our working hours have gone back to the way they were, and the union is asking us if we would like to pursue a class action lawsuit. We didn't because we like the old manager. In the following months, there were lots of pizza days, prizes for meeting certain sales goals, lots of recognition for hard work speeches, and we even got end of financial year bonuses. Story 7. My last crap jobs. Was hired to do PC repair, only to be told an hour before my first shift that there wasn't any hours available for that, and they could put me elsewhere. Begrudgingly accepted as I turned down another position and needed the work, Fast forward a few months and the manager decides that I'm going to be filling in for the only person handling shipping and receiving for this giant department store, single-handedly, with three days of training. Of course, things aren't going so well, as this is a two-person position at a minimum for eight hours, and I'm expected to do it in six. The last day on the job, I'm swamped as frick. Vendors are fighting with each other over dock space, and another manager comes up freaking out at me because I couldn't get the extra work. I had told her repeatedly it couldn't be done. Exasperated, I pleaded my case, to which she callously said I don't give a crap. Now I'm getting mad, and she replies to me at this point and says, Do you know who you're talking to? I replied, Yeah, the witch who is now running this crap show, cause I'm out. 11.35 an hour, with my promised hours gutted, was not worth it. Story 8 I worked at a Domino's, and there was this old lady who ordered from us a lot, and was always unpleasant. One day she calls and makes an order that she must make a lot because she knew exactly how much it was supposed to cost, down to the penny. I put her order in and tell her how much it is, and she starts getting upset because the order was two cents more than what it usually is, and starts accusing me of trying to steal money from her. She asks, how much money do you make stealing two cents from every customer? Well, if I was trying to steal money and I did it to 100 customers, I would have made a whole $2. I didn't know what to do because she wouldn't accept the order unless it was exactly how much she thought it should be, and there's nothing I can do to remove two cents from an order. So I ask the manager, and she just tells me to hang up. I was new at the time, and I'm guessing this wasn't the first time that store got messed up by her. It felt amazing. That was the only time I ever got to do that to a customer. Not the worst idea out there. If anyone has seen Office Space, that's essentially what his plan was. He devised a program that would scrape a fraction of a penny from every transaction, and over the course of a few years or so, he'd have been a millionaire. Except that he implemented it wrong and had a decimal in the wrong place, so over the weekend, he was a millionaire, and someone was sure to notice that. Story 9. Got out of the Army and joined the Air Force National Guard in my home state, 20 minutes after leaving my new base for the first time, I received a phone call from a guy introducing himself as a sergeant first class from the Army Reserve, informing me that his system shows my name had been pulled from the reserve pool to deploy to Iraq within three months and congratulated me. Kindly informed him that, one, I had just returned from deployment before getting out and was still guaranteed more than three months stateside, and two, I had enlisted with the Air Guard and therefore was exempt. He got irritated, raised his tone of voice, and said, Well, you better get that paperwork to me ASAP, because my system says you're going. Told him I signed a contract which binds me to that, not your system. So I told him it's not my job to update to ensure your system for you. I gave him the name of the organization I was now affiliated with, city and state it was in, my recruiter's name, rank, and personal phone number. Now you have several different ways to contact who you need to in order to get your system updated and hung up on him. Story 10. I was working in retail and a customer walked up and asked if, since the ATM was broken, she could buy something then return it for cash. I had no clue so I called over another employee who had been there a while and said no. Furious, she demanded to speak to our manager. We called over the supervisor of our section and he listened to her question and said no. Furious, again, she demanded his manager. He calls the manager, and she shows up. Surprisingly, the answer is no. Customer is red in the face, and demands another manager. We call over another manager. 
She asks again, he says no. When she said she wanted his manager, the owner said, I'm the owner of this store, the answer is no. It's against company policy. She stormed out, surprisingly not asking for the CEO of the company. She didn't take no from two employees, one supervisor, one manager, or the owner. And Jesus freaking Christ, when you have five people of increasing power lined up telling you no, and there's a line of bored customers behind you, you need to stop. I think she could have just gone to like a grocery store and bought a piece of gum or something and paid 40 or $60 over. As long as it's with a check or a debit card, they've always given me cash back. Story 11. I work at a local mountain resort, and in the summer, we have an alpine slide and chairlift running. You aren't allowed to go down the slide if you're under the influence of alcohol. A group of five or so people bought tickets, went down once, and then went up to the restaurant. They then came back down and went down the slide again. They drank a ton at the restaurant, and one girl fell out of the slide and got all burned up. Not a big deal, it happens to people every day on the slide. We all trained in first aid. But the reason she fell out was because she and all her friends were drunk. Our supervisor came and told them that they couldn't go down again. And they argued, saying, we aren't that drunk, we're fine. And we just had to keep telling them that they weren't allowed to go down again. The girl who fell before says to my supervisor, I'm pretty sure I'm older than you, so... And my supervisor replies, um, I'm pretty sure I work here. Story 12 company did restructuring and laid about 30 of us off. My boss, picture a female Limburg, gave me my contract package, which also included a lecture on if I was a better worker, the company wouldn't need to do this. After a month, they realized it was a mistake and told us they were nullifying our contracts and we could have our job back. I told that my attorney wasn't aware of contract nullification given the language in the document, and if they didn't stand by their commitment, We had already retained counsel, so whatever would happen, they came back and said we could have a one-year package over and above salary if we stayed for a year. I quit on the 366th day, and my boss told me that she was hurt, and that this was very hard for her. I called her a sociopath and walked out of the building. You're fired. Here's your compensation package. Okay. No, come back. No, you. Please, just one year. One year later. Bye. Why you do this? No, you. That's how I picture that going down. Story 13. I once worked for a shady company that sold and repaired expensive American vacuum cleaners. I was the service manager. I had planned a six-week scuba diving trip with a mate for two years. They were well aware of this and said it was fine. When the time came close, I put in my application for six weeks leave. I was called into the husband and wife owner's office and told that I could only take three weeks. I had saved the time up with their permission. I pointed this out, but they were adamant that three weeks was the most they were prepared to authorize. I even tried to negotiate with them for five weeks, but that was firmly rejected. So I walked from the office, wrote my resignation letter, and left. Had a great holiday diving the Great Barrier Reef. They rang me weekly for a solid three months, offering all sorts of incentives to come back, but by then I had won a great government job. Frick you, Tony and Anne. Mmm, this one sounds fishy. He works for a company that repairs expensive American vacuum cleaners. I'm pretty sure this guy is, or definitely knows, of Ed, the disappearer from Breaking Bad, who will give you a new identity and relocate you to parts unknown if you call and speak the following specific code words. I need a dust filter for a Hoover Max Extract 60 Pressure Pro. Story 14. I had found another job and was just waiting it out to get my bonus. For about three months, I was free to express myself in ways I wouldn't have otherwise. I had noticed that my vacation time had not been approved and normally would have asked about it, but decided to see how it might play out. My manager called me about two weeks before my vacation to inform me that it was denied. I wasn't the least upset, but I informed her I was going anyway. She threatened me every way under the sun, which only made me laugh at her. Everyone was surprised when I left her office smiling, as they had heard her. I went to my desk, printed off my resignation, and gave it to her. Got my bonus, got my vacation, and also got an extra two weeks paid because I was going to a competitor, and they didn't want me sharing information. Story 15. I coached gymnastics at a very highly competitive gym. One of my duties was to select and train the youngest talent for a compulsory team training. 
parents caught on to what I was doing when I pulled kids from rec classes and got all nail-biting excited, but never confronted me if I didn't pursue a kid for higher training. Until one higher-powered exec mom did, yelling in the lobby that I was blind. Couldn't see Susie's talent. Her somersault is better than all the other five-year-olds in class. We should be training her for free, because did we know her soccer coach thinks she's a star? A star! I told her competitive gymnastics is a family commitment, and while Susie is great, her family is what didn't make the cut. Story 16. When I left my job, I was invited to meet with the CEO because he was unhappy. I was leaving and they wanted to understand why. I explained that I was not being paid enough and the recently announced pay raise was not good enough. He got irritated and, in a patronizing tone, started trying to lecture me on how I should have handled that situation better. I interrupted him. He didn't like that, so I added, I'm leaving, I have nothing to lose, and then informed him that I had already been let down over pay multiple times, had witnessed others trying to get more pay and being refused, so I had no interest in begging to be paid what I already deserved to be paid. Story 17. I work for a pipeline company. One of our lines brings fuel into a refinery. We needed something changed out on our line and needed it done ASAP. Timing was critical because after a few days of not being about to deliver into the refinery, it would back up our system and shut down the whole pipeline. Big problem. The refinery guys were total D-bags and were obviously used to being in charge and definitely didn't take orders from a young female. For two days, I gotta remind them that I fuel your god dang refinery. Oh, you don't think you can get this today? I hope you don't mind explaining this when our pipeline is down and your refinery shuts down. <laughs> Felt so good, man. Story 18. Over the course of six months, through countless phone calls to different union offices and the Department of Labor, I eventually got my boss fired for changing people's time keeping information to steal overtime from them. During those months, I was treated like absolute dog crap by this guy. But I never actually did anything wrong, so I couldn't be punished. At one point, management, against contract rules, denied my request to be in my best friend's wedding, and my boss brought me into his office and threatened to fire me. At this point, I had called the Northeast District Business Associate on him, and I will never forget the look on my boss's face when he realized I knew he couldn't do anything to me. Story 19 when mom got ridiculously nasty and rude with me in my own home i just moved into. I told her if she doesn't like my food, furniture, clothes, location of where my apartment is, and the AC, there's the door. I'm glad to lock the top and bottom locks. She shut the F up when she realized I was dead serious when I opened the door. Story 20. When my ex finally stood up to his mother. She was 90% of the reason for divorce. About our custody schedule and told her, we have it figured out, myself, their mother, and their stepdad. We do not need your advice or opinion. I just wish I had been able to witness it. Story 21. Had a client freak out on us and harass us with phone calls every few minutes because we couldn't accommodate her needs. She wanted to make her countertops larger than the actual slab of granite. You can't grow rock. So we just refused her deposit and told her to not call us anymore. She was speechless. She was trying to get a discount, and now she's got to start the whole process elsewhere. We don't abide by the customer's always right rule. Story 22. A nursing home patient called 911 themselves, and the nurse told us, EMS, to leave before we saw the patient. No, once an active emergency scene is established, the competent patient and the emergency services providers call the shots. The police removed him from the patient's room. His boss removed him from his job later. Story 23. A few years ago, my ex-wife left me in a hurry, and then the weekend afterwards demanded that I be home around lunchtime so that she could pick up some things she left behind. Some friends of mine had organized to take me out to lunch in the city that day because I was feeling crap about the whole situation, and it was the first time in years that I was able to say, no, I have plans and you'll have to work around them. Felt amazing to put myself first for once. Story 24 I'm an ICU nurse. The last two nights I've been taking care of a large, strong man going through withdrawals. It involves four-point restraints. This morning I was trying to put elbow pads on him and he swung at me. But of course the restraints prevented this. He was furious as I just stood there and slowly blinked at him. Story 25 I was at a wedding party and there was a brief lull in between scheduled parts and we were all just milling around waiting. 
The bridesmaid, known for being obnoxiously bossy, starts barking out orders to every single person. As soon as she's finished, the wedding planner, who was standing behind her, chimes in with, Nobody does any of that, and then tells us to sit tight. It was great. Story 26. I'm the most senior employee here, so I'm technically the boss. No, you're covering for another department. Regardless of how long you've worked here, you're only filling in and are not employed for us. You are technically the least senior, according to company policy. Even less senior than the girl who started 20 minutes before you got here. Story 27. When I quit my job because my supervisor was treating me like a child, and the next day my manager called me to try and get me to stay. Story 28. A heading towards abusive ex told me that he would leave me if I didn't lose 10 pounds in the two weeks before his friend's wedding. He was blown away when I said okay and walked away. Story 29. My boss sold the company about a week after the official switch to the new owners. He called me up to ask me to do something. I told him my consulting fees were $120 an hour. He didn't take me up on it, unfortunately. Story 30. Don't know if these count. I had a crappy group project teammate in college. Didn't do any work. He applied for the company I worked for about a year after college. My boss asked if I knew him, and I said, yep, don't hire him. It was the ultimate peer review revenge. Story 31. When I realized I could just hang up on my sister when she wanted to yell at me on the phone. As a 12-year-old, that was a powerful moment. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.